Welcome to our online service on this New Year's weekend. Spearfish United Methodist Church is located in Spearfish, South Dakota, which is on the northern side of the Black Hills, which are on the western side of South Dakota. We're so glad that you could join us. If you're just visiting us, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube page if you want more of these videos. I would also encourage you to follow our Facebook page, Spearfish United Methodist Church, and join our Facebook group, Spearfish United Methodist Church Community, so that you can be more in fellowship with those who watch our services. Tonight we're going to talk about the space between the past and the future. And I hope you can stay with me here in the present. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for new beginnings. What an incredible day this is with a fresh year's potential stretched out before us. We want to be found faithful this year in each and every opportunity you bring to us. Thank you, Lord, for new beginnings. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. First scripture is from Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. For this prayer time, we will use a piece called We Begin Again in Love. I will sing the song response twice to teach it to you, and then we will move on with the prayer. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. We forgive ourselves and each other, we begin again in love. For remaining silent when a single voice would have made a difference, 
We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For each time that our fears have made us rigid and inaccessible, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For each time we have struck out in anger without just cause, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For each time that our greed has blinded us to the needs of others, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For the selfishness that sets us apart and alone, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For falling short of the admonitions of the Spirit, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For losing sight of our unity, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For those and for so many acts, both evident and subtle, which have fueled the illusions of separateness, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with Thee I will, one will, to do and to endure. Our second scripture comes from 1 John 3, verses 18 through 24. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, 
and receive from him anything we ask, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he has commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are at the juncture where we perceive a year to be dying and a new year being born. But I think we need to start smaller. I think we need to understand how our weeks and months came to be. The Romans have influenced quite a bit about how we think about time. Our days of the week are all named after pagan gods. Sunday was named Solus Dies, or the Sun God's Day. Monday was named Lunae Dies, or the Moon Goddess's Day. And Saturday was Saturn's Day, who was the god of plenty, time, and liberation. Tuesday through Thursday are all named after Norse, Germanic, Anglo-Saxon counterparts. Martis Diaz became Tears Day or Tuesday, as Mars and Tyr were both the gods of war. Mercury Diaz, Mercury's Day became Woden's Day or Odin's Day or Wednesday for the gods of knowledge. Jovis Diaz, Jupiter's Day became Thor's Day or Thursday for the gods of thunder. And Veneris Diaz, Venus's Day, became Freya's Day or Friday for the goddesses of love and fertility. The months are a little more complicated. To look at this, we need to realize the calendar did not always have 12 months. The first Latin calendar was called the Romulan calendar and had only 10 months. Months coming from the word month for or time it takes for a full moon to happen. It started in March and ended in December. That's why September, October, November, and December are called the 7th, Septem, 8th, Octo, 9th, Novem, and 10th, Decem months. July and August are named for the emperors Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus, but were originally Quintilis and Sextilis, or the 5th and 6th months. April came from the Latin term for opening, as in flower buds and green things opening. March is for Mars, the god of war. May is for Maya, the goddess of growth and of plants. June is for the goddess Juno, the goddess of marriage. That is why we have the month or full moon time of the honeymoon in June. And the old custom was to give a newlywed couple enough mead or fermented honey to last them a month or the old length of a honeymoon. Eventually, January and February got added in. February comes from Februalia, which was the time of making atoning sacrifices and honoring the dead. And then finally we get to this new month of this new year, January. January is named for the Roman god Janus, the god of gates, doorways, and passages. He has two faces, one looking forward and one looking back which also makes him the god of transitions, duality, beginnings and endings, the perfect thing to name this liminal space after. But let's first focus on that Janus was considered to be the god of doors. You walk through a door and suddenly... Uh, now what did I come in here for again? This happens to us because we hit something called an event boundary in our brains. Should we live our lives on that side of the door in the past? Should we live them on this side of the door, the future? I think the answer is to live in this event boundary. What is the main thing you can tell about a person from reading their tombstone? You get their name, some other random tidbits like military rank, who they were married to, an epitaph like I told you I was sick, or one of my favorites I have seen at the Old Vale Cemetery in South Dakota. Here lies Cowboy Tom and his harmonica. 
The actor Peter O'Toole once stated that he wanted his epitaph to be from a dry cleaning tag attached to a still stained coat he got. It read, It distresses us to return work which is not perfect. The main thing we learn from a tombstone is the birth year and the death year. Yet all of the living was done here, in this liminal space, in this dash between two numbers. In our first John reading today, we are told not to live in love with words and speech, but through actions and truth. We can sit here and read the book and discuss it and hope for any change to happen. We can also just wait for eternity to come. But I think it's more important that we act so that the book and discussions mean something and so that little bits of eternity come to this moment now. One of my favorite movies is The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. And the line goes that th through my head all the time that says, Your reality, sir, is lies and balderdash, and I am delighted to say that I have no grasp of it whatsoever. I think a better description of what I mean can be found in this clip of Tom Hanks describing the aria La Mamma Morta in the movie Philadelphia. It's Maria Callas. Sandria Chenier. Umberto Giordano. This is Madalena. She's saying how during the French Revolution, a mob set fire to her house. And her mother died, saving her. She's look. The place that cradled me is burning. strings and it changes everything. It's like the music, it fills with, with a hope. And that'll change again, listen. I am. 
is everything around you, just the mud and the blood. I am the God that comes down from the heavens to the earth and makes of the earth a heaven. Your reality, sir, is lies in balderdash, and I am glad to say that I have no grasp of it whatsoever. I think a good clue about how we make of the earth a heaven comes from the wonderful song we sing at this time every year. I've heard it said that to sing is to pray twice. We could certainly sing Auld Lang Syne as a prayer. Let's read through the lyrics. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, should old acquaintance be forgot in Auld Lang Syne? Should everything that we've been through, all our friendships, all our challenges, everything, be forgotten in the Auld Lang Syne or long time since? And surely you'll buy your pine cup, and surely I'll buy mine, and we'll take a cup of kindness yet for Auld Lang Syne. Sure, you'll take care of yourself, and sure, I'll take care of myself, but at some point we're going to need to take a cup of kindness for that old time sense. We too have run about the hills and picked the daisies fine, but we've wandered many a weary foot since Auld Lang Syne. We too have paddled in the stream from morning sun till dine, but seas between us broad have roared since Auld Lang Syne. We have had many wonderful times together in the past, but we have allowed ourselves to be separated in the storms of life. And there's a hand, my trusty friend, and give me a hand o' thine, and we'll take a right goodwill draught for Auld Lang Syne. For Auld Lang Syne, my dear, for Auld Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for Auld Lang Syne. We can mend this rift between us through a little love, goodwill, and a cup of kindness. You know, Auld Lang Syne was the last song of the informal sing-along that accompanied the Christmas truce of 1914. It was sung with gusto and meaning by the 100,000 soldiers on both sides of the war. But by the end of the war, the enmity, the trenches, the poison gas, the, everyone was just so disillusioned as to what this war was doing and why they were there that the English finally just decided to change the words. And it's said that they changed him to this. We're here because we're here, because we're here, because we're here. We're here because we're here, because we're here, because we're here. They had allowed everything around them to be the blood and the mud. We can uh, try to evade that mistake by sharing right goodwill draughts and taking a cup of kindness yet to make of the earth a heaven now while we transverse this little dash between numbers. Amen.
Should all the acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all the acquaintance be forgot and all lang syne? For all lang syne, my dear, for all lang syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for all lang syne. And surely you'll buy your pint cup, and surely I'll buy mine, and we'll take a cup of kindness yet. For old lang syne, for old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet. For old lang syne, we too have run about the hills and picked the daisies fine. But we've wandered many a weary foot since Auld Lang Syne. For Auld Lang Syne, my dear, for Auld Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for Auld Lang Syne. We too have paddled in the stream from morning sun till dine, but seas between us broad have roared since Auld Lang Syne. For Auld Lang Syne, my dear, for Auld Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for Auld Lang Syne. And there's a hand, my trusty friend, and give me a hand of thine, and we'll take a wry good will draught for old lang syne, for old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet. For all legs I receive this benediction. May the God who gave us this year, and the Savior who walked at our side each day, and the Spirit who filled us with life abundant, grace the coming year with peace and hope and joy. Amen.